So what have we got on this week? So this week we've got a number of, I don't know, issues, I think, with a couple of the fish. So we're going to look at those in a moment because one put, cropped up yesterday morning and the other one's been going on ever since I had that pH problem issue, mishap, whatever you want to call it. Um, he's been, he's been not a happy bunny. So we're going to have a quick look and this it's my biggest shower that's giving me some problems at the moment. I think it's problems, I don't know, but we'll have a look at that in a minute. So we've got that to do as well today. Also, there was some fantastic comments from when I did my pH video, a couple of videos along. When I took my eye off the ball, doing my pH, no, when I was doing my tests and then I was doing the pH, but anyway. So I had some fantastic comments there and I've, <laughs> I've got some school days again. Oh, it's school days, I tell you. It's like, some people say, oh, there's, if you just leave your pond alone, we know what to do. But, and which I agree with, you know, don't mess with your pond too much because you, you mess with a lot of things and sometimes you, you, you mess with it a bit too much. I completely agree with that. I, well, not 100% agree, but I, I do agree with that. Don't be messing with your pond and don't be messing with your fish too much. I don't like taking them out unless I have to and I don't really like messing with the water unless I have to. But the last few weeks I've had to, so such is. Anyways, so I'm a bit off track there. So we're going to have a look at that, them today as well. But yeah, there was some comments uh, from people about the pH stuff and things saying, oh yeah, but did you try this? Yeah, did you try that? <laughs> no, but it looks like I'm going to, because there was, a... anyway, you'll see them in a minute. But before that, we've got some, uh, a little treat for my fish. Been out and got some uh, watermelon, nice thick chunky piece of watermelon. I usually take the, the pips out, because I don't know how they do with the digestive on that, comment below. Um, so I usually take the pips out and just give them that one. I also get the top bit, you know the end bit that you usually chuck away. Now that bit floats, I usually float that up in the sky pond so that the, the fish go up and they can just nibble away and enjoy a bit of, it's got vitamin C and minerals and things in it I think. And I love watermelon, oh, love it. So we're gonna get this in now and uh, see what goes on. Right, let's talk about the fish first because about two days ago my lovely looking chag, bless it, the little white spot, only just see it on its, just on its head, top of its head about here, not here, over there. Um, so I thought, oh, a little white spot, I wonder what that's for. 24, well, 48 hours later, I get up in the morning and it looks like this. Yeah, what the hell, so, yeah, I did, I, again, I watched it all day, not all day, I didn't stand there watching it all day, but you know, kept an eye on it throughout the day, and thought, mm, do I leave that and let, let it take its course and then deal with itself, or do I intervene and just clean it up a little bit and see what happens? So, end of the day, thought, I'm gonna clean it up and help it along a little bit. So I got out my Medikit. I've got one of those uh, little Medikits that come with a number of things, like you've got the, uh, Hydrogen peroxide there to, to clean the wound. You've got the propolis to spray on top of it, gloves and all that kind of stuff. They come in little packs. I think there's a number of companies that do them, but anyway. So the one I've got, actually I need to get a new one because it's, it's going out of date soon. So I need to pick up another one, which I'll probably pick up at the show in Coventry. There's a show on in Coventry soon that um, I'll be going to. Saturday or Sunday, I'm not sure yet. Half a dozen oat cakes for half a dozen people with half a dozen in each pack. <laughs> you know how it goes. Every year, do the same thing. I'm gonna do it again. It's all right. So yeah, fish bomb, high five, all that kind of stuff. Get free oat cakes. So back to the fish. Bit of a digress there. So yeah, so I uh, thought I'd bring the bring the fish out, um, stick it on the net, and I didn't put it under because it was. He's a pretty good fish to shag. He's kind of quite laid back. Doesn't mind me handling him too much, but I don't handle him a lot. But you know. So I got him out, give it a quick wipe over, a quick touch up with the hydrogen peroxide, um, just to make sure that it was clean, and then a little spray tss, tss, of the propolis on it, and left it for a couple of days. And looking today, which is like nearly 48 hours later, looking a lot better. So I'll see if I can get a picture of that before the end of this video. So I'm just gonna monitor that, and then hopefully, fingers crossed, that was just a bit of a bumped itself, knocked itself, I have no idea. But anyway, so that's looking a bit better now. So let's talk about the uh, shower. So, largest fish in there, shower, had him last year, of somebody who was uh, closing down his pond, uh, local guy Andy, hey mate if you're watching. So I had, had the shower off him last year, uh, been in the pond, yeah, fantastic, settling in there nicely, until I had the pH problems, and then 
he's not been not been right since. He's just doing this. Sort of loafing around, sitting on the bottom. It's not clamped, he's just can't be asked. He's literally just laying on his belly on the bottom a lot. Uh, the other fish are swimming around him. Some of them push him on a little bit and he kind of, okay, fine. And he'll swim to the top. You might see him in a minute, just come to the window and then he just disappears back to the bottom. And then he just sits in the bottom looking at the corner. Now, the last time that happened, if you think back, when I had my goshki, uh, he died. So, I don't, I don't think there's any, but we're going to get him out again, because I had him out about three or four weeks ago when we were having the, the parasite problems before the pH problems, problems. So I had him out then and um, yeah, we found a bit of fluke. So I'm wondering whether he's kept some fluke or not, but everybody else seems fine in there. Apart from like you say, Chagoy with a white spot on his head that we're dealing with. Interesting times. So I think if we get that shower out, um, and a lot of people, just before I get the shower out actually, I did a video a while back on how to catch a fish. Um, practice makes perfect basically. <clears throat> And uh, I thought this time I'll do it in real time and I'll put the video camera, I've got a little GoPro that goes underwater. And I thought I'll put that on so you can see how it, how it happens, how it works. So I've given them some, a bit of a treat because I've just faffed around with them a little bit. I've had the jag out, um, give the whatever it is on top of his head a bit of a clean and put some propolis spray on, which is, it's, I tell you what, it's a freaking miracle cure. Well, it's not miracle cure stuff, but it, it does really good on my fish. I've done had a, had a couple of fish. One of them I had smudged that had a quite a bad lesion or whatever it was on his side. Um, I'll show you this picture. Remember that, that was, I think that was late last year. And we did a couple of uh, get him outs and cleaned him up and put the propolis on and back to normal now. So I always sort of swear by that at the moment. I mean, if you use sort of different things, then by all means comment below and you know, we're always willing to look at something else, but. So yeah, so didn't, this is what we found on the, on the slide when we did the, the mucus scrape. One tinsy wincy little baby fluke on the whole slide and that was it so i'm not going to do i'm not going to start chucking in any any fluke treatments with that because i can, I can only see one and you know i'm sure where there's one there's others but not on those two and i did two scrapes one on both sides you saw me scrape both sides of the fish i was going to do the belly but i didn't want to bother him too much um <laughs> and he's, he's off the bottom now cured Sorted, scraped up one fluke off and he's all right now. Not. So, yeah, so the, I don't know, we're, we're going to have to keep an eye on him. And, because uh, he, he is, that's weird, isn't it? Ever since I've taken him out and did that scrape, he's just totally up off the bottom eating. Have I found a new cure for fluke? Get your fish out, scrape them, bring them around my house. <laughs> Give me a scrape and they're cured. Brilliant. <laughs> right, um, just looking at the pH stuff and some of the questions, some of the answers that came in. Uh, it's one of the one of the big things I love about doing this channel is it, when you when you're doing these tests, you know they take for ages to do, and it takes me hours to edit them and hours to make it make sure that the, the viewer yourselves are happy with how it looks. Because if I just chucked out the raw footage, you'd be like, what the, what the hell is he on about, sort of thing. Because you know when you're making these videos, it takes so much time. And the editing has to go in, and it, it, they're putting the right, selecting the right background stuff, and 
anyway it's, it, it's it's really good when you get feedback from the viewers to say yeah I watched your video and what about this and I watched your video and what do you think about that and oh I like that but I didn't like this but what about that you know what I mean it's, it's ace because when I did the pH video a few videos back um, some great comments come through that oh yeah but did you try this for example a classic one here for you that you know again not thinking is um, somebody commented did you have you checked your your air blower so have you checked your your, your air blower because you know the filter might be a bit blocked uh, and it might be pulling in stuff from there and I'm like god I can't remember the last time I checked the filter on the top of that I'll go and have a look and look at this and then this <laughs> I've got a spare filter look at the spare compared to so that's been sitting you know what I mean? It's just little things that some great comments come through, and of course I feed off these comments, and I and I turn I'll turn them into some you know some into tests or into uh, trying things myself. You know because you can't knock it till you've tried it, and every day's a school day. So yeah, very interesting. So thanks so much for the comments to, on the pH. Oh, something else that somebody said as well about the the bucket of water. You know yeah, but you had the bucket of water. But don't forget sometimes the water parameters change. We had somebody in that was doing a degree in water or something like that, or he did it for a job. Which is, which is, you can't knock that, can you? Getting any better than that? And he said, yeah, but sometimes the parameters of water changes. If you put it in a bucket and leave it 24 hours, yeah, the pH could change on that. Doesn't matter if you've got filter floss in there or not. So, I've still been seeing comments coming through uh, of people saying that they're going to try it in their pond and then tell me as well. So, fantastic. So, just going back to the show then, I went diverse again into it. Never mind. Is um, Again, I'm just going to keep an eye on him because I don't want to keep taking him out and I'm, I will sort bath him, I think, tomorrow now. I'm not going to bother him again today because I've had him out and we've had him a bit of scrape, as you saw. I didn't get him out completely. I saw, I, I, I tried to lie him on the net, net a little bit rather than bringing him out and putting him in a tub and handling him and mauling him. I'd rather just lie him on the net, do what I've got to do and then just lower the net and let him swim off again. So it makes him feel a little bit more secure or what, I have no idea. But like I said, I don't really like taking fish out for no, for no reason. If I have to, I will do. So the, the chag, Top of heads look heads his head is looking a bit better. The the shower now, he's he was up feeding a minute ago. I don't know whether you just saw him at the window then. I've, with me looking this way, I can only kind of see in the background what's happening here. But he has been up a couple of times now, taking some of this food up. I've got some dried shrimps and some mealworm and I went to I got them off um, Lee at JWG at Koi, uh, a few minutes off the M1 over towards Nottingham area. Um, he's got his own Facebook site as well, and he does videos as well. One of the first video guys I watched, uh, I watched is how I make a, a, a koi pond, and I based mine off his idea, cracking bloke. So he gave me a couple of tubs of, of mealworm and uh, dried shrimps, and there was some fly pupae. So I'm, I'm using them this year, because, thanks Lee, I'm gonna come up and see you again. I'll come up and see you and have a little, little wander around your shop, eh? I don't know when yet, but I'll come up. <laughs> Right, just from doing that hand feeding there, that oh, I love that part of this hobby, just getting the fish to eat out your hand and whatever. Um, but yeah, as you, as you saw there, the chag, um, this is sort of 24 hours later now, after we put the, the stuff on its on its head to the propolis stuff, it's it's looking pretty good now. It's looking a lot better than it did, like I took the picture the other day. Well, that's good. And also, as you saw, my show was coming up then, and, and he's actually eating now. We eat. I, I had I got some mussels, and a, you know, you, you can get a, a mixed bag of seafood from Aldi. If you go to Tesco, it's like six quid. If you go to Aldi uh, in the UK, it's only £3.49 or whatever it is, which is lots better because you feed it to the fish, so you don't want to be spending, you know, mega bucks on it. But it's, it's, it's a, and the fish love them. You know, all the fish. I think there's only the Tancho that doesn't really come anywhere near me yet, but it's only a little fish, so it's going to take time for that one. But yeah, um, I'm happy enough at the moment with the progress on top of the Chag's head. And the show out, I'm still not sure. It's coming up and eating now, but Still skimming along the bottom for some unknown reason, so <laughs> just checks here again now. Anyway, so I'll keep an eye on them. So, promise you that picture of the update of the Chag's head. This is it. Well, this is it. 
<laughs> so looking good. I'm dead pleased that that propolis and a bit of a clean up the propolis has worked. And for you eagle-eyed viewers as well, you'd have spotted when I did the little underground water thing showing the show that this has happened to my pond wall. It looks like the black stuff is back. I know Martin from Devon Coy, he posted a video on it a little while back. He was brushing it off. Um, so yeah, I'm, I, again, I'm not 100% sure why. It's got to be something to do with killing blanket weed. So if you want to see how I dealt with the black stuff last time, you need to click on this video here. And if you haven't subscribed yet, by all means, click the subscribe button just there. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. Coipon Lifestyle.